Let me ask you about what we should now really realistically expect as far as the next session of Parliament is concerned. The government is building up hopes that they will be able to push the GST through. We've seen several developments uh, over the last 24 hours and perhaps we will now see, uh, as Sanjay Jha was pointing out, the elevation of someone like Prakash Javadekar and the environment related issues uh, being brought up in Parliament. But uh, realistically, hopes now high from what we can expect in the next session of Parliament. Uh, would you bet on the GST, for instance? Yeah, I think there is now a broad consensus in favor of GST, with the exception of the Congress, which wants to play a spoiler, even though they have no real objection to it. Uh, I think it should go through because I think there is a huge amount of support from the regional parties who see themselves as gainers from it. So my guess is that it, it is uh, there is at least a 65% chance that it will pass in the monsoon session of parliament. As far as mm -hmm. the government itself is concerned, the meaning of this exercise is actually that it will be more of the same. Because two years what the government yeah. has been done is they have been announcing scheme after scheme, Make in India, Digital mm. India, or Stand Up India, Start Up India, whatever it is. So I think what this uh, change means is that from now on, the next three years there is only one agenda, that is execution, execution, execution. Now they have to make sure that whatever has been announced has to be executed so that by 2017 and 18, things start showing up in terms of what people start feeling, whether it is jobs or growth or whatever. So I think uh, the the reason why there is not major change is anybody who starts from scratch today will not be able to execute mm -hmm. what has already been announced. So the idea yeah. is to strengthen ministries to execute and not to keep on announcing more things. I think the, ex the announcement phase is over. That's what this thing means. Mm. AKB, would you agree with that, that the announcement phase is over? It is now time for execution. And in a sense, this is also perhaps the first real step towards Mission 2019 eventually. And in the interim, the state elections, uh, you know, whether or not this actually pays off in terms of uh, states like UP, Uttarakhand, uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but, you know, the other point that I want to talk about is this massive outreach exercise that this government has embarked on uh, to try and reach out to the media. In the performance appraisal, we are given to understand that the Prime Minister pulled people up for not being active on social media and so on and so forth. So one is execution and the other is to get the message out. So launching a massive outreach campaign. Would you say that this is in that sense the first big milestone towards Mission 2019? Yeah, I think uh, from now on uh, you can um, rest assured uh, that uh, the government will be uh, in implementation mode. Uh, I think uh, if you if you uh, uh, read uh, the Prime Minister's recent statements and even the Finance Minister's statements, uh, there are very very few new uh, ideas or new laws that are on the anvil. Uh, uh, of course, you have got the DRT law to be passed. You have got the the uh, the bankruptcy court. Some of the the enabling laws will have to be passed. Uh, the GST has to be passed. And if this government is brave, uh, I would say that they should still try with the Rajya Sabha composition changing in the government's favor, they should still try to reintroduce uh, the land acquisition um, law changes which they, they began uh, their tenure with. Uh, and finally gave up because of stiff opposition because not much has moved on in terms of land leasing in the states so you still have a problem of acquiring land so if land leasing laws have not been introduced by the states clearly you need at the central level an enabling law uh, that allows easier acquisition of land for uh, industrial projects so i think uh, you are right uh, that the next uh, three years you will see a lot of implementation and uh, this is the start of uh, project 2019 if you want to say that but i will just take a, a, a moment on uh, to draw your attention to the the fact that out of the five ministers who have who have uh, been dropped uh, four are in water uh, belong to water resources now yeah. we know the the union cabinet minister there now i think there's a huge agenda on ganga rejuvenation and everything mm. and one hasn't heard much of um, action on that you have a tribal affairs uh, agenda, the government has a huge agenda there, and we haven't seen much of action there. Agriculture is once again a ministry where the government has had to cut sorry figures on many issues. Yeah. And Panchayati Raj is a new uh, department. So I, I'm saying, barring HRD perhaps, 
all the four ministers who have uh, had to go this time uh, are areas where new ministers need to be watched because I have a feeling these new ministers in these four ministries at least will be uh, guys and, and, and men or women who would be able to provide the kind of support to the senior ministers in a manner that the government, the Modi government can implement its agenda more effectively and efficiently. Well, that, that's an important point that you make, AKB. But Sanjay Jha, uh, let me come to you now. As we talk about Mission 2019, that's still three years away. Let me ask you about what we can expect as far as the next session of Parliament is concerned. GST, will the Congress be willing to play ball this time around? What are the issues that you're likely to raise in Parliament in this session? You know, Shireen, uh, first and foremost, you're a very seasoned business journalist, and I can tell you that we live in extraordinary times where even the GDP of this country is being questioned. And this is not just a political statement. You'll, you'll hear people like Ruchir Sharma, who said that in reality, India's GDP today can't be more than 5.5%. So we are clearly living in, in, in times where even statistical data being published is being questioned and this is something that everyone should worry about my point number two my bgp spokesperson friend kept quoting foreign multilateral institutions he should read the economist which used the term jumle bazi to describe mr modi's several schemes which have gone nowhere and the truth is the make in india is actually created yeah. jobs in china if you look at the trade imbalance between the two countries but we can debate it some other time as far as the gst is concerned i have, I have a simple statement to make sure in. The Congress party has repeatedly said that you should put a cap on the revenue neutral rate at 18%. Mm. And the logic behind it is very simple. Let me explain that in two lines. Number one, it is far above similar GST comparable rates to other countries, which are at around 14 and 15%. This government has a buffer of 3%. And therefore, the logic by this BJP government to say, no, we won't do it, is actually something that we need to worry about. Because if Mr. Jaitley says that that puts a cap and we have to move a constitutional amendment, well, the answer to that is very simple that Mr. Chidambaram has been saying all the time. If you are in a financial emergency, you will increase corporate tax rates, you will increase personal tax rates, you will increase, basically you will increase direct tax rates and not tax a common man on what is an ind indirect tax. So I think... So is it still line, a no-go then, Sanjay Jha? Writing. Absolutely. Is it I still a no-go the then on GST? The Congress party, Shirin, is very clear. There has to be a cap on the tax rate. There has to be a proper you know, adjudication machinery which gives adequate representation to the states in the GST council. And third, which has been even agreed by Arvind Subramaniam, who said that this 1% interstate tax is actually yeah. against which, the very principle the of the which GST. Which the government is willing to be flexible on. They, they're, they're willing to be flexible on, uh, on some of those demands with the exception of the cap. But even perhaps there we could expect some flexibility. But uh, we're completely out of time. Uh, we do hope that it's going to be a productive uh, session of Parliament when we do see Parliament reconvene. And as all of our guests have pointed out, it'll be interesting to see uh, what uh, changes happen in the key ministries where ministers of state have been dropped and what message this actually sends out to the BJP cadre as far as Mission 2019 is concerned. As always, our Jagannathan, Sanjay Jha, Zafar Islam and A.K. Bharacharya appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much for your time. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this special. From all of us here, goodbye. Thanks for watching.